And welcome back. Three. Dr. Bill Deagle joins us tonight. Uh, Bill is usually with us on Thursday nights, but we're happy to have him anytime we can get him. There is so much going on out there now. Uh, it is a deluge. And what we're trying to do is stay on top of things as best we can so you can make the best of it yourselves. We're not telling you what to think. We're just asking you to engage in the process. It's, uh, it's a tough one. And all we can do is present it as logically and pragmatically as we can. I'm uh, still, of course, right on the Fukushima Daiichi calamity, and it is the gravest situation that I think that uh, the human species has probably ever faced. Outside of an off-planet, an enormous asteroid hit, I can think of nothing that might mess up uh, more days for more people than the Fukushima plant when they try to remove these spent fuel rods. And there's some new ones in there, too, but most of them are, are spent from Reactor 4 spent fuel pool. And if you know the story, and most of you do, if any of them even touch each other on the way of being extracted, they won't be pulled all the way out of the water. They'll be pulled up and then over in water and put down into a, a separate cask. And then the crane will remove itself. The cask lid will be put on, and they'll pull the cask out. It's a tall, round object which will hold, apparently, one fuel assembly uh, each. And I'm not sure how many fuel rods are in each assembly. I think it's four, but I'm, I'm not sure. Now, about six months ago, TEPCO did a watch how easy it is fuel removal exercise. First, what they did was invite the media out there and then ban everyone from taking any video. No video recording until we tell you to. And then they got ready for their demo and they, what did they do? They had a crane. And they went over and said, okay, you may now record. And so everyone began dutifully recording. And they dropped the crane hook down and picked up a hook, which was uh, tethered to the top of the spent fuel group, which I believe is four rods. Pulled it straight up and out of the water into the air, right? And we'll tell you why you can't do that now in a minute with, with Bill. They pulled this uh, group of, of, let's call them four rods up, and what was really funny is that the crew that was standing there was watching and the fuel rods began to kind of uh, sway back and forth and, and not mind their manners. And one of these guys reached out with his hand and grabbed the fuel rod and put it back in line with the other three. Now, if he had done that in real life, he'd been dead in hours or less. Uh, this doesn't happen. And you knew right then and there that it was a fake exercise. They weren't really pulling out a spent fuel assembly. It was a dummy, and it was put in there in advance. That's the best guess. But this is this is serious business, what we're looking at now. Potentially catastrophic business for the entire Northern Hemisphere and the planet. Bill, welcome back. Thanks for being here tonight. Yeah, there's a lot of issues. I want to touch on a few things that haven't been covered um, that are around Fukushima. Uh, the issue that keeps coming up that we've reported on repeatedly with Chris Harris, that's his radio name, our nuclear safety expert, and uh, he's one of the top 40 experts in the world, so he recently went to KEPCO in South Korea to review all of their nuclear plants. So he's a uh, active working nuclear safety officer. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it was a key issue that the one that he's most concerned about straight off is the loss of the boronated rubber between all the fuel rod assemblies that's gone now. Uh, which means if you did pull up these rods and they bang together, they're going to cause a critical reaction, which can cause a, a trigger what's called a pyrophoric fire. The second thing is the seal, which is in all these fuel cooling pools. And because the neutron annealing <coughs> and time is destroying the seal, and the two things will happen, either just decay of it, which can't be fixed. In other words, you can't fix this in the current situation. But if the, if the tanks twist with an earthquake or with the side and then tilt over, just that portion will pull the fuel rod seal of the pool. And once they drain, all these fuel rod assemblies will not only bang against each other, there'll be no water to slow the neutron. This story came out a few days ago, and we mentioned it. We have the clip. We're going to play it in a moment. If you just joined us, by the man voted most popular, like the, like the, uh, the man of Canada, uh, David Suzuki, has gone on record, uh, and, and, and then he, he mentioned in the papers, in the reports, we've dug these up because we've covered these. These are scientific reports, what scientists have said, 
the probability of an earthquake and what it'll do if there's full meltdown of the fuel rod stored there. And the ground's all spongy and, and, and eroding into a huge sinkhole and another tsunami, a 7.2 earthquake, it's over. And it just shows the insanity of the power structure. And now they're getting ready to start removing the fuel rods. That, statistically, they believe, will probably cause them to bang together and catch on fire. Uh, and then you've got a full meltdown on your hands. Uh, so uh, Anthony Gucciardi, who's really our expert on Fukushima, covering the latest information, uh, joins us in studio to talk about the madness of these people. His article is the top story on Infowars.com right now. Uh, and uh, Anthony, tell us the situation. Well, you notice how they craft the debate. Now it's about the TSA agent and should they be armed. Meanwhile, we have top generals saying, yes, the nuclear weapons are, you know, they're missing and, and we have major problems. Obama is getting rid of all of the top guys who will not listen to him and play ball. And now we have this scientist, this internationally recognized scientist. He hosts his own television show, actually. And yes, he was the number five guy in Canada, the number one living man in Canada, the most popular, had the most votes. Everyone loves him. And he went to this forum, and thankfully someone captured it with their iPhone, or else we would never know. And he was alerting them, kind of like a behind-the-scenes deal, saying, listen, you know, this is about water ecology, this, this conference, this symposium, but the real thing is Fukushima. And he was saying, if just one more earthquake, 7.0 or higher, happens, and he said there's a 95% chance that it will happen over the next three years, then Fukushima would just absolutely melt down, and the U.S. would have to be evacuated. And then that Japan would go, quote unquote, bye bye. So he's basically saying everyone in Japan would die. And he's a physicist and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, and it's not like we're saying this or we're making this up. This is a direct quote. He's saying there's a 95% chance this will happen in the next three years if we don't do something about it. And I agree with that because that's our own analysis from Dr. Busby and other uh, top folks we've had on. We either, I mean, there should be 50,000 people there in radiation suits rotating in and out in lead suits in, in a world emergency to clean that out right now. Instead, I've read that they can't get workers to go in. The starfish are melting and dying. The butterflies are dying and are mutated. The kids are dropping dead. People are staying there to take care of their horses and livestock. They're dying. And the answer is just let it happen. No, there's, uh, there's still plenty of people living in the Fukushima region. Well, Ann Coulter says they should be thankful. No, they should be. No, that whole idea is that if you have a little bit of radiation, you get immunized like a vaccine. But no, the concept here is that TEPCO is now going in. Are you racist against radiation? I'm absolutely racist against radiation. I don't want to take Ann Coulter radiation pills, but maybe we should start promoting that. So I think the key thing here is they call it the TEPCO Mafia now because they're just so bad at what they do. They're either incompetent or nefarious. No one really knows. I mean, they're taping things up with duct tape at this nuclear plant. It's on life support right now, and they're taping it up with duct tape. But what's going on is the United States is moving in with some scientists, some little guys to go maybe help with the Fukushima disaster that could potentially blow up and, you know, he says cause the U.S. to evacuate. But they're going in and they're going to test the reactor four, extracting some fuel rods because they said that one was actually not melted down. The other ones have volatile, toxic elements inside of them all. But the thing here, and there's 1,400 of them, if just two touch at all, they will blow up. And it could mean the entire explosion of the entire facility. Could just mean a massive amount of radiation leakage into the Pacific. Yeah, for folks that don't know, bombs are bad, but they dissipate and are cleaner when they detonate. There's less, I mean, I mean you're talking about a small ball of it, you know, that blows up a whole city. Yes. It's purified. This is just mass ton upon ton, six reactors smoldering, half blown up, just hellish, and it's all sliding into the sea because they got to keep pumping water in on them to keep them from exploding. I mean, it's just a hellish situation. Well, they admitted. Well, actually, TEPCO didn't admit. First, they lied, and they said that it was just a bit of radiation. Then an independent study in Japan found it was two and a half times the amount of radiation initially released, and that 70% of all the cesium and radioactive waste went into the Pacific Ocean on purpose. They said, ah, just... By the way, I'm going to be honest. I mean, th th this is what I've said when I've talked about the nascent iodine that we've produced and we shell, because all the scientists and doctors say this is the best thing for protecting your thyroid. But that's not a silver bullet. The only thing I can do... If this really blows up, is I'm I've got to go to the southern hemisphere. I guess I'll tell the crew come with me if you want to go, and we're gonna have to like try to. I mean, this is like unbelievable. This is unbelievable. And and notice the, it was the Canadian version of Huffington Post where I found this guy's video and has a hundred something thousand views now. We're publicizing it majorly, but this wasn't even in the mainstream press. 
It's, it's like Fukushima is going to blow up. The, U the U.S. is going to be evacuated. Japan, everyone in Japan. By the way, he's reading scientific papers that we've listed in the article. This is what the scientists, do. from bad to worse, they look at the different scenarios. There's not a good scenario. Unless you have like 100,000 people, they work by the thousands. One week on, you give them some huge amount of pay to do it. In, in lead suits, you go in. Uh, in an emergency situation, you extract everything out of there, but nobody wants it. So everybody passes the buck as the time bomb just ticks down. Well, well this is this is the perfect psychology of these delusional people. That's it. And there's these, these people are insane. And there's numerous ways they could do it with cement and everything. They could have this, you know, a massive expansion that could protect everything to some degree, but they're just not doing it. They're like, oh, we'll just go in and remove those rocks. That's right. It's been recommended that, say, 20 miles away with trucks, you bring it to a giant quarry, and you and and and, and you have big sections where you get them, pour concrete over them, seal them, and then move on. But they won't do that either. And then you ask, what are you even going to do with those rods when you extract them? Shoot them in the space is most likely the answer. And then, meanwhile, Obama's recommending we build all of these power uh, nuclear power plants in the United States along the coastline. I mean, this is just complete insanity, just complete and utter chaos, which I guess they want. Why? Do, I mean, that's the joke from Dr. Busby, is that it's like an alien race is secretly running things, and they want higher radiation to live in, and they're terraforming us with radiation. I mean, that's, that's the only plausible, and I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's, it's that crazy. It's a, it's a Fertility's it's a going down, everything. Yeah, it, it's, it's, but I mean, it's madness. Where do these elites think they're going to live? Fukushima's not a problem. Oh, no. It's, it's brown bags. Brown bags. Yeah, I mean, radiation that could cause the U.S. evacuation is not a big deal to the mainstream media. It's nothing. I mean, that's not even worth mentioning besides a little blog post on the Canadian version of Huffington Post. I mean, it's not even in the news. RT's reporting on it. But they report on all the Fukushima stuff. By the way, speaking of Fukushima, let's play uh, the clip of award-winning scientist David Suzuki has gone on record in public. Uh, top uh, scientists, another Fukushima uh, quake would mean U.S. evacuation on the West Coast. Bye-bye, Japan. That if, in fact, the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed, it's bye-bye, Japan, and everybody on the West Coast of North America should evacuate. Now, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. And by the way, we've had Dr. Busby on, we've had other physicists on. This is a real possibility. No, it's, there's no question. I mean, if there was another earthquake at the direct site of Fukushima, I mean, this is a top scientist who's researching this, and this was a water ecology symposium. In, In fact, what's the hydrology term they use where it's all spongy and, the, and it's all sinkholing? No, exactly. It's a form of erosion that happens. And basically... Liquefaction. They've already destroyed the Pacific anyway. And it's, there's so much toxic debris and contaminants in, this, in the Pacific Ocean that it's just swallowing the whole of Fukushima. And God forbid there is another earthquake. He says there's a 95% chance in the next three years there'll be one. But one thing we didn't even mention, by the way, I'm not even as concerned about the earthquake. I'm concerned about TEPCO going in with those 1,400 spent fuel rods and, one, and two of them coming together. I think there's a much bigger probability of that happening. And that's happening now this month. In two weeks, they're starting the test protocols for that. And we have someone quoted here speaking on that. Dr. Helen uh, Caldicott says that two rods could touch each other in this process, which has been done before, and there could be a fission reaction and a very large release of radiation just from two rods. I have m less faith in TEPCO than I do. I agree. Well, your article's up on Infowars.com. Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been battling problem after problem. They've been plugging leaks and scrambling to build storage tanks for contaminated water. Now they're about to begin work on a task that's taken years to prepare. They're ready to move the fuel rods from the damaged reactor buildings to a safer location. NHK World's Yoichi Tateiwa has more in today's Nuclear Watch. The media entered the Fukushima Daiichi on Wednesday to see the number four reactor building. The building contains more than 1,500 fuel units. Most of them have been used. They're extremely hot, highly radioactive, and experts say they need to be kept cool for 30 to 40 years. The rods are stored in a pool about 20 meters above ground. The water traps radiation and keeps the rods cool. But a hydrogen explosion in 2011 weakened the building's structure. 
Experts say the rods must be moved to a safer place. Managers of Tokyo Electric Power Company have been preparing to start the job for the last two and a half years. They planned to lift the rods out with a crane, but the building was too weak to support it. So walkers built a steel frame. They will transfer the rods to containers that can seal in radiation. They will then move these to a study facility within the compound and put them back into water. The job is far from straightforward. The walkers have to maneuver the rods under water to prevent any radiation from escaping. And they will have to cope with high levels of radiation, up to 200 microsieverts per hour. The working environment here is more difficult and stressful than usual. Therefore, I want to devote every effort to safely transfer all the fuel rods. TEPCO officials say it will take more than a year to remove all the rods from reactor number four. Then, they will have to do it all over again at the three other reactors. They haven't said when they expect to finish. The operation is due to start this month. It's the latest hurdle in the long process of decommissioning the plant, a project that's expected to take up to 40 years. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. And to Japan now, uh, the country is bracing itself for the most dangerous operation at the Fukushima nuclear plant since it was crippled by a quake and tsunami in March 2011. The company running the facility plans to move radioactive fuel rods to safe storage. RT Alexei Yershevsky joins us now live from Japan. Alexei, hi there. Well, tell us why is this operation so dangerous? You know, usually this operation is not so difficult. It happens uh, um, at nuclear stations, more than 400 of them, on everyday basis across the world. But of course, in Fukushima case, this is something unique and very risky. Now, uh, the fuel rods are extracted from pools using automated cranes at most of the stations. At Fukushima, not only these pools where these rods and each rod weighs more than two tons, uh, not only these pools are crippled, but the machinery, the automated machinery, doesn't work as well. So every rod has to be extracted from the pool manually. Now imagine, uh, provided that these, uh, these rods cannot even hit each other, this may cause a nuclear uh, chain reaction and uh, grave consequences. Now imagine if a human error or a, for instance an earthquake and this area is very seismic active. Uh, just last week, 10 days ago, there was an earthquake in the area, a 7 point uh, magnitude uh, earthquake not far from the station. So anything like this, God forbid of course, but anything, if anything like this happens, then uh, the consequences could be even more severe than what it is now. But the TEP company uh, running the Fukushima clear-up process and the Japanese government are now in a vicious cycle situation uh, because on the one hand they need to remove these fuel rods they are contaminating the water as has been reported in the waters of the Fukushima nuclear power plant and uh, on the other hand of course this is a very risky venture because they have to uh, literally extract every rod and there's more than a thousand of them and each rod has to be extracted manually Indeed, it's a very complex facility, and uh, uh, you've traveled to the exclusion zone, we know that. Uh, what did you see there? What did you witness there? Well, we just, uh, we just returned from the Fukushima extru uh, exclusion zone. The closest we could get to the nuclear power station was about six kilometers, the final checkpoint before you enter the completely no-go zone. We actually managed to sneak inside the no-go zone on the, on the, in other parts of the area. And what surprised me the most, and I've been to the Chernobyl exclusion zone on many times, uh, that uh, some of the towns and, and uh, villages just 10, 15 kilometers from the nuclear power stations have now been reopened uh, for people. We literally saw the people rebuilding their houses. Uh, to be fair, the radiation levels there are quite low. They are lower than in some of the European cities, in fact. But 60, 70 kilometers from the station, the places which had never been in the uh, exclusion zone, which had always been open to the people, we've managed to find hotspots of radiation with about um, three uh, microsieverts per hour. And this is exactly the Chernobyl uh, radiation level, the ones I witnessed in Chernobyl on many occasions. And this is, of course, creating a huge discourse and, and discussion in uh, Japan, whether it was the right decision to reopen these areas because again if uh, any earthquake or any calamity happens again then these people would have to be re-evacuated again even uh, um, that's provided of course if uh, there will be anyone to re-evacuate uh, depending on the scale of a possible tragedy.
Well, just picking up on what you said about the discourse that's been opened by the situation in uh, Japan, how strong is the anti-nuclear movement in the country? Well, in fact, in the Fukushima region itself, there are several NGOs who do not believe the government and the TEPCO organization in their measurements of the radiation levels. The one which struck me the most, and we talked to, uh, with them yesterday, uh, the, the movement called the Mothers of Fukushima. These are ordinary women who are afraid for the safety and health of their children. They bought radiation meters, uh, which the cheapest of them costs around a thousand US dollars, and they're just patrolling the areas, taking their own measurements and sending them to the government. But the government, as they say, is doing nothing. Uh, it's not considering their radiation uh, measurements as if they're trying to play down the scale of uh, the things happening. Even in Tokyo, in front of the industrial ministry, uh, there's a picket, there's a protest happening for already uh, 800 days with uh, people there protesting against nuclear energy and the actions of the government and the TEPCO. They told me today, uh, which also was quite shocking to me, that they are against the idea of holding the Summer Olympics in Tokyo in 2020. So you can see how uh, serious the rhetoric of the anti-nuclear movement is now in Japan even though um, they say that their voice is being often silenced by those at power. All right, Alessi, thank you so much for bringing us this update live from Japan. And Christina Consolo, founder and host of Nuked Radio, doubts that engineers will be able to pull this off, given the level of damage at the plant. The more I study this problem, in fact, I've been up all night reading. I haven't even gone to sleep yet. Um, the more that I, I look into this... I don't know how Japan thinks that they're going to pull this off. The, um, the pictures that have been released by TEPCO and the amount of damage that the racks and the pool have sustained, there's no way that they're going to be able to pull those assemblies out um, and, and do it without bumping into other things, and that's where the danger is. The other problem is we have three molten cores that we don't even know where they are, and it, it's really surprising that there isn't a single expert that has called for ground-penetrating radar um, in, in order to identify where these cores are so that that problem can also be addressed.